This is of an aftermath I feel your sign I can read most anything I can read your zigzag lines Face the world with all its faults It's not what I thought it was I sank beneath the ocean And I died Die, but now I'm coming around again. 2002 is when I had my nervous breakdown. Nervous breakdown. Well, that's what my family called. He had a nervous breakdown. No, the nineties the media was particularly bad. The Daily Mail and and the like. And you'd be surprised even some of the so-called sensible broadsheet papers got it wrong. You know. But you had the likes of Peter Sutcliffe, didn't you? See, that that's why he did it. He heard voices from his dad's grave and all this shit. This is the problem. Uh, my name is Anthony Scully, and I was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. I've got five grown up children, five grandchildren, and two cats. But only the cats live with me. And now, in his early 40s, he's put pen to paper to describe just what it's like to live with this condition. An uncomfortable subject, but it's said to make comic reading at times. I'm a community psychiatric nurse in Manchester, and everybody I know who works in mental health is raving about a new book by Anthony Scally called Eyebrows and Other Fish. Anthony Scally has schizophrenia, and his book is... Getting... This is someone who develops a, a series of frightening beliefs, and suddenly he is dragged into a stark hospital environment. I've been sectioned five times and each time was like the first time because I'd lost insight when I was psychotic. We're, we're, we're all a figment of YouTube's imagination. Make sure you get the keywords right on that. It's scally. It's in wag. Welcome to Bronte Garden. Never get out, never get out. I'll never get out. I'll let you out. Celebrity, get me out of here. I'm thinking of scaling the walls and getting on the roof. Here. Oh, he's Tony Scully then. <laughs> Do you know how his hearing went today? I think we're still in there at the moment. Is he, is he in the hearing now? Yeah. How are you doing, Joe? Alright, how are you doing? Alright. What happened? It went well. Did it? Yeah, I'm in formal now. Excellent. I'm in formal, so I've got a lot more freedoms. I can uh, virtually come and go as I please, well, within reason. I've got the air of men's time. Yeah, you'll be out in a week. A week or so, yeah. What? Yeah, no. Go on. Hurry up and get your stuff together. Got a puggy cats. <laughs> this is this, this. Who is this man? We could do one of them programs. What is it? Where you go around his house? You the film up through the keyhole with Tony Scala, yeah. Who lives in a house like this? You are back to show up to me. This is Tony Nelson Winnershaw. It's Monday morning on the 19th of January. He got up the store since he gets back to show Are you there? You're not there. Are you there? Yeah, ma'am. Can't believe I've still gone gas. Day today for uh, Schizomanic, his first uh, performance in front of Tony Warren at uh, Salford University. I think Tony will be nervous. I don't know why, because everybody thinks he's brilliant and his book's excellent and he's a great speaker. I've got a one sheet of paper, I was going to say, as I've just been asking, um, did we have a notebook? Yeah. Got an address? There's a camera bag, don't need an address, no worries. You can shut this out, won't you? Uh, it could just be a Q and A, yeah. you know, something as simple as that. It could be an invited lecture. It could be students. It doesn't have to be students. It could be staff. Now these are really powerful emotional stories, extremely powerful. So what we have to do is that we have somebody who's there for the carer and the service user, um, and then somebody else who's in the room in case what the students are hearing triggers off a memory or triggers off an emotion that they find difficult to deal with. So, so we're kind of very careful about how we manage the emotionality of all, all of that. It would, be, it would be structured to a certain degree, you know, I could talk about 
hobby came out, mm -hmm. what it's like to live with a diagnosis, mm -hmm. stigma and all that. Mm -hmm. I could talk about coping mechanisms, personal ones. I could talk about medication and side effects and how it affects me and how, you know, he's not exactly, you're not endeared to the medication, but you take it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I treat my medication, for instance, like a firewall for a computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it keeps me well and there's not information overload mm -hmm. and it's updated once a month, you know, depot injection. Uh, I've never seen anything that wasn't actually there, yeah. Yeah. you know, but I've still got this diagnosis. Did it go how you thought it'd go? It did, yeah. yeah. I think it was uh, nice of him to meet us, nice of him to give us his, uh, his time. He must be busy, he's got a nice office. Um, it's good that the likes of me can see such an office, isn't it? Not for the likes of us, so... At the moment, if you, um, I'm getting away with it. And I'm not as bad as I was last time. And I'm, you're sleeping, aren't you? Yeah, I'm taking medication. This time's different. I'm taking medication. I'm not drinking. I'm not taking ecstasy. I'm not taking cocaine. You're countering, you're countering things with the cervical, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, but, this, but I'm not taking any drugs. I'm not drinking. Not at all. No, but when you've got to switch off, you switch yeah, off. Yeah, with the cervical, what you do? You know at 12 o'clock when you can't sleep, you say, well, I mean, by half 12, you quarter past your sleep. Not always, but... Not yeah, always, but... And you wake up at 7. It and slows you, your thoughts down. You're a bit groggy for an hour, and then it wears off, and then you get going again, and then, you know, that's what I've done today, you know. And that's just 25 milligrams, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for our heels to open. <laughs> Live Irish music. I got battered outside there, you know, when I was off my head. I tried it on with someone's wife right in front of it. And he just, what? Well, I, I walked out, this was hanging, I walked out of the pub and I walked into a fist. He just banged me, so I went straight down and fucking kicked me in the head. How are you telling me, actually? Yeah. What would you ex? Thank you. So, uh, yeah. If I feel like uh, I need to switch off or something, the thoughts are racing, I'll, uh, yeah. I'll medicate. With their stuff? Cerical. Yeah. Why do you think it works for bipolar though, and schizophrenia? Why does it work for Well, there's both? got to be an overlap with the illnesses, hasn't there? There has to be. Because I get high. I just don't have desperate lows. Yeah, so that's what, so that's your illness is when you're high. And you see, in that you, but it's high, it's a different kind of high because you link a lot of stuff together and all that. Yeah, well, I take things on board. It's like information overload, isn't it? Mm. But, but I do get high and, you know, like, uh, interact with people in a kind of a cavalier way and, you know, no fear whatsoever. Yeah. And uh, do get those feelings that there's nothing I can't accomplish. So are you high now then, do you say? No. No. Maybe after this I will be. It's nice, isn't it? Best as you can get in this with this. I came back from uh, America as soon as I came back, exactly the same thing happened as last year, or in 2009. I started sleeping, getting tired, not wanting to get up, not having any energy, and it got worse and worse and worse. And I thought, oh well, no, here we go again. It's hard to describe depression after you've had it, after the event, because you can't remember. But all I know is what I used to do every day, which was nothing apart from get up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, feed the fish, have my medication, I hated it, I thought, it's like, I'm a failure, look where I'm living, I used to have a house, I had this, I had that, and the other. I used to go to bed at four, or fall asleep on the city at four, I didn't like going to bed. Wake up about 10, 11, and just not want to get up, stay in bed, try and go back to sleep. Guilt, fear, shame, everything you do is wrong, you're shit, you're a piece of shit, you, you, you've ruined your life, you've ruined your kid's life. I'm just going to uh, Tony Scully's now to do a bit more of, that, of this film, believe it or not. Oh my God, what are you wearing? Did you, did you see your kids on Father's Day? Uh, yeah, yeah, three of them. Which ones? Anthony, Gemma, Claire. The little K-pop. Oh yeah. That's she, says I, she said I should put it in the garden, but somebody had pinched it round here. No, yeah, they pinched it around here. They, they kidnap them and send you ransom notes. <laughs> <laughs>